Hey, what's going on, Lolly Legionnaires? It's the Novel Squad, back with more Chrono Clock. Uh, Crow's here. She's smiling. It's great. Yeah, she's bobbing. You can't tell, but we got a little Machiro cursor, cursor with us. It's great. Until we smash Crow. She is the legalist of Blawas. <laughs> they all share comparison. No one can compare to a time goddess. Dude. What would that be like? Smashing the goddess of time? That'd be pretty 10 out of 10 smash. I don't know, seeing as how Crow is not a corporeal being, probably none. I'm assuming she's a virgin. Which is weird, because she always made fun of us for being virgins. I'm gonna throw some hands. Alright. But, but it has to be consensual. You cannot rape a law. You will be, sm you will immediately be smited. Yeah. Immediately. No question. Yeah. Lollies have internal rape sensors. Just thought I'd let you guys know that. Very important information. All these are all true facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's get going. Uh, anyway, you shouldn't be saying virgin over and over again with the way you're dressed. You're making me kind of nervous here. Like, uh, come on. Come on, Crow. Don't do this to me. Of course he's trying to fucking smash you. Look at you. Now look here. Don't you dare under underestimate a growing boy like that. Hell, I could use you to jerk off later if I wanted. What are you gonna do about it, Miss Time Goddess? Oh, uh, um, um, she's gonna watch us? Not? That's the beginning of a smash. Uh, while we were bantering back and forth like that, it happened. Oh, uh, I know what happens. You ready for this, Ty? It's gonna be great. I was, I was already looking up since Crow was floating off the ground. <laughs> the shadow of something falling caught my eye. There was a person. Uh, a girl was falling from the sky. I wonder which one it was. <laughs> uh, huh? Hmm. 
this should be obvious, but her descent did not miraculously cease the further she fell. If only physics had stopped working. Her body smashed into the ground. She's dead. 100%. No. More voices. Students nearby all scream in horror. Time to poquito watch. Hearing Crow's disinterested voice finally stabbed me out of my haze. Suicide? Maybe. <laughs> now just a goddamn minute. I grabbed my pocket watch and threw it against the pavement. Maximum velocity. No hesitation. Smash that boy -o. Five minutes earlier in the classroom. I was back in my homeroom again. Classes had already ended, so it was practically deserted. It seemed like I had safely were on time to just before anything happened. Time to save a woman. What the hell was that? Right out of goddamn nowhere. What? <laughs> Crook. Fuck. Degenerate. Somebody fell to their death. Uh, considering that she doesn't really think the same way humans do, maybe Crow doesn't feel that a human dying is something to get worked up about. She's also been in existence since the beginning of time. She's seen a lot of dead humans. Wait, this isn't the time to argue over that. I've only got five minutes to save a women's. <laughs> I didn't see exactly where the girl had fallen from, but she must have been up on the roof somewhere. That's... That, no. Crow, go look up on the roof for me. You can float through ceilings. Shut up, Crow. <laughs> With reluctance, she ascended through the ceiling of the classroom and disappeared. I can't fly or pass through walls like she can, so I had to take the long way upstairs. There are only a few places where the roof can be accessed, and none of them are close by. Well, rip. <laughs> I counted down the minutes as I ran. One... Two, three, uh, what comes after three? <laughs> I can't remember. <sighs> I was in the classroom for at least one minute, and I had been running for at least two minutes. Worst case scenario, I might have already last, lost four minutes. Knowing I had only one minute left, I kept running, dripping with sweat, until I finally reached the door to the roof and threw it open. Just as I had expected, I was not alone on this huge, the hot and humid rooftop. Aside from Crow, two other people stood there. Two people? It, it wasn't a suicide? My heart pounding, my, or, yeah, my heart pounding uncontrollably. I yelled to the person I recognized as if this were some sort of suspense movie. Hey, shoot you! Did you fucking push her off the roof or something? The fag. Phew. <laughs> Shuji was his usual abrasive self. The best of friends. Hearing him joking like that threw me off for a minute. Now what? I turned to Crow, still wondering what had happened. Damn it, Crow, you're no help at all. Crow just shrugged her bare shoulders. The bright sun really did make her look more enticing. I have a boner. This is weird. I then turned to the young girl who I am seen fall from the roof a moment ago. Nope, oh, she, she no longer has facial features. She's that embarrassed. She has lost all facial features. That is the worst kind of embarrassed lolly. You know you you know you done screwed up when your lolly loses all facial features. She was so surprised at my sudden entrance that she turned bright red and stopped speaking altogether, like the mermaid who lost her voice. 
They can't give a name because it's copyrighted. Disney would fuck you in the ass. She was a cute little girl. Probably a first year. Oh, are we a pedo? No, she's not that she's not that much younger than us. It's not. It's fine. She's only one year younger than us, right? Okay. It's fine. Yep. Definitely cutie. <laughs> no, she was eight. Why was she in school? Not my fault. Well, that was possible. Scratched my head, wondering why I never checked out any of the first year girls before. Probably because you weren't a pedophile before. You weren't, you weren't looking for. You weren't actively looking for the lollies. That was your first problem. Dude, of course this is a priority. We've already passed the five minute limit. Clearly, and no suicides have happened yet. Uh, what, what exactly is going on here? No? Did this girl try to assassinate you? You must have thrown her off, in the, off the roof in self-defense. Right? Because you're an asshole? <laughs> you have a big fat mouth. Has anyone ever told you that? Same thing. Or so Suji says. So, he's technically right. He never lies. Which is, he always says exactly what he's thinking, with as much bluntness as possible, no matter the circumstances. That explains the current situation. See? See, see what I mean? If you don't watch your mouth with people before you know it, your life's gonna end like an end up like an eighty percent clearance sale on grudges. What the fuck does that even mean? I know it's not good, but I don't know what it means. Who cares about the other twenty percent, Shuji? You're asking me? Shut up, Shuji. Running? No, wait, wait. Wait, someone died up here. Now we're just talking the same way we always do. The lolly still has no facial features. We need to get those back. Ah, like that ever happened. Hey, we got, oh, they're, they're gone. Hearing Shuji's words, the girl suddenly froze in horror. Man, that's quite a blatant reaction. Ah, uh, Mayu. Huh? What? Um, did I come at a bad time? I'm just gonna close this door. Guess so. Oh, listen to this music. So, why did this girl fall from the roof? If she was in this situation five minutes before it happened. She tried to confess, but ended up being rejected and heartbroken? Probably because Shuji's an asshole. And like you just said, he's very blunt. Or was it just a freak accident that she avoided this time because I showed up? <laughs> I really wanted to get out of here, but knowing what I saw happen before, I couldn't move at all. The girl's expression was almost painful. <laughs> oh no! She burst into tears as she ran away. Not the lolly. No! She was running to get out of there. Clearly she couldn't handle the stress of the situation. 
But she was overwhelmed with emotion, and she was trying to run with her eyes nearly closed, so she actually dashed off in the wrong direction, towards the edge. She was about to die again. That's what it was. It all happened too fast for Shuji to react, because he's an idiot. But I moved a lot quicker, because I knew what happened. She would have gotten nervous and ran off like that, whether I had been here or not. The girl was moving slowly enough that I was able to reach out and grab her by the arm with little effort before she could fall. Man, look at those tears in her eyes. The sad lolly. I don't like sad lollies. Bad man. You gotta make this lolly happy again. My arm is shaking like crazy. Shuji, I saved your life. Despite complaining, Shuji heaved a sigh of relief. Shut up, Shuji. No one cares if you have a heart attack. Yeah, of course. Watching someone nearly fall to their death is scary enough to cause three or four heart attacks. Uh, I may not have had a heart attack, but I have gotten hit with a truck. That's close enough. No. <laughs> Shut up, Shuji. <laughs> She's still just over here, just like... <laughs> hmm? What? Oh, there's still a lot of here. Hearing her voice, I suddenly realized the girl was trembling, and her eyes were full of tears. Oh no. Oh, he stopped being sad. Making me, making me feel bad. I actually feel sad. <laughs> She's practically bawling. I'm the one who wants to cry here. I watched the girl. I wanted to go back in time and handle this situation a little better, but since I could only use the watch once an hour, that wasn't an option. Oi, yeah, Shuji? Yeah? No, wait. Wait! Wait! When Shuji st started walking over, I held up my hand and motioned for him to stop. This girl tried to confess her feelings, and then got so embarrassed she nearly fell to her death. There's still loose ends left unresolved, and I couldn't resolve them with Shuji still here. The dumbass. Shuji, go back to class. Yes. <laughs> Please just do it. She won't calm down until you leave. She won't calm down anyways. But you need to leave. I just don't want you here. Shuji looked at the distraught girl once again and sighed. Dude. Uh, Shuji, it is my policy to not loot the lollies. Who do you think I am? There is one thing I can take seriously, and that is lollies. But you know me pretty well. I returned his sigh with one of my own. Just go before this gets any more complicated. Shuji, just shut the hell up. She just had to get the last word in before he left, because he's a fucking asshole. At the same time, Crow floated down went to where we were standing, without a care in the world, because she's a time goddess. She doesn't give a shit about us. I couldn't answer Crow while the girl was with me. She'd think I was insane.
Nope. Completely verbal. What? Oh, I didn't read that last line. Hold on. What on earth was I doing anyway? Passage of time. In clouds. Cludes! No, that was, that was the passage of time, you idiot. And we're back to the clouds. Yeah. I gave the girl a moment to calm down before I said anything else to her. She was freaking out. Although Crow came over to see what was happening, she soon got bored and floated away like a balloon when I wouldn't talk to her. A balloon? All right. When Crow doesn't have anything to do, she likes to sit all day on the monorail that goes around the city. Or sometimes just goes for leisurely strolls through the atmosphere. But, putting that aside, Christ, it's hot. I have the sweat. I wipe the sweat from my brow with the back of my hand. The rooftop is open to students, but most students don't go there during the summer and winter. When the fuck do they go up there then? They're generally just too lazy to leave the air-conditioned classrooms. Even the students who think of eating lunch outside for a change of pace would prefer eating in the shade of the courtyard over the hot rooftop. But the rooftop is a common anime trope. Oh, oh the lolly speaks. I turn my attention back to the girl who was looking up at me. Dude, this is like one of the cutest lollies ever. She looked quite confused, but at least she had calmed down. I guess you don't know who I am at all. Let me introduce myself. I am the Lord of Space and Time. And by time, I mean five minutes. I was just passing through when I saw you with my classmate, Shuji. He's a dick. We're both second years, and my name is Ray. Shut up, Mew. Call me Ray. I'm not big on my last name. Don't have to keep apologizing. She's gonna do it again, isn't she? I knew it. You said you can stop apologizing. How many times are you going to apologize? <laughs> Do you really think I'm that scary? Damn it, she's come full circle. This girl must know how integral repetition is to the chemistry of a good comedy duo without even realizing it. Surely if she took someone under their wings, she could become famous. Whoa, whoa, you got it all wrong. I'm not trying to start a comedy duo here. Forget it, just talking to myself here. Though I have a feeling that your destiny might be waiting you in Kansai. Her eyes widened in disbelief. She clearly didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I guess that would confuse anyone. Mostly because I'm an idiot. I tried to calm her down by telling a bunch of dumb jokes, but it was plain to see that she was incredibly nervous about talking to someone she didn't know. Well, at least she's not apologizing anymore. Well. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's sit down and talk. 
Oh boy. Ready for some uh lit fan service. Okay, Ty. <laughs> I don't really think we should stand and talk considering what happened earlier. You could die again. And I can't go back in time five minutes now. She sat down like I told her. Like a good little lolly. There we go. I was just glad she was cooperating with me. I sat on the ground with her, not taking my eyes off her. I'm not going to let her run off the roof again. Ah. Ah. Look at this view. No, it's nothing. Don't, don't worry. It's just that I can see your panties. Light green, huh? Plain white ones aren't bad either, but I like the mature shirt. I can't speak. Send help. Mature sort of impression different colors can leave. Brain. Brain, you gotta work. <laughs> you can't stop now. It's just a... It was just a side benefit, though, so I didn't point it out. There certainly wasn't a reason to. This is a lot, this is a little hard for me to explain, so let me just confirm a few things. So, you tried to tell Shuji how you felt, but you were too nervous to actually do it. And then I barged in on you guys at the worst possible time because I'm a fucking idiot, right? Mia was terribly discouraged about the whole thing. Man, what a bummer. I wondered what to do next. Uh, maybe jump off the roof. After I rewound time to save her from that fall, my work here was pretty much done. But to me, I looked like some weird upperclassman who came in and messed everything up right when she was trying to confess her feelings. Aw, oh, rip. She wouldn't believe me if I told her the truth, and besides, my time rewinding ability wasn't so something I can talk to others about in earnest. They'd think I was insane. Maybe I am. Such is the most troublesome aspect of time travel. So, you were trying to confess after all, huh? Well, it's just really impressive that you worked up the courage to try. I'm not joking or flattering you here. I wish I had a girlfriend too, but I've never been brave enough to confess my feelings to someone. That's not true. I just used the pocket watch because I'm a lame-o. <laughs> I really think that's amazing. No regrets. That's sad. I'm kind of curious. What do you like about Shuji? Because he's a dick. Yeah. She was so nervous, we couldn't hold much of a conversation. Maybe I should lead the conversation on a little more, then. He's a good chap, you know. Bit of a dick. Maybe a bit of an otaku. Who the fuck isn't? Shut up. And sometimes he can be a loudmouth who says whatever he damn well pleases. But he can be reliable and honest when he least expects it. Ah, that's time. 
Shut up. Just. All right. We'll see more of Mayu's panties next time. If you want to see more of the laws, you gotta subscribe so you know when they're here. Come on. It's, it's pretty easy. One button. Yep. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty simple. 